Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Today we are going to make the ultimate temperature blanket. Now this is the ultimate temperature blanket for a whole bunch of reasons. First, no ends to sew in. Secondly, only half the stitches you have to do. Third, it is gonna be the right size. It's not gonna be too long. You're gonna be able to use it on your bed, on your sofa, in your life. It's a usable size. Now what do I mean by only half the stitches? So across each row, you're only making a stitch into every other stitch. So half the stitches, half the time. And if you don't wanna do a temperature blanket for the whole year, don't even fret about it. You can do it just for three months. It'll be a fabulous wrap, like a shawl, glamorous. Or you can even do for six months and that will be like a bed runner. So like the bottom half of your bed draped in a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous blanket. So you don't have to have tassels. If you don't want tassels, you can have a nice straight edge. This is not a perfectly straight edge. Yours will be straight. <laughs> this is my prototype and I realized what I did wrong. <laughs> So yours will be a lot straighter than mine, but we'll also be doing it together. So I'm gonna be doing once or twice a month, I'm gonna do a live stream of when I'm working on my blanket so you can work on yours at the same time. And don't get stressed out thinking you have to crochet or commit to crocheting every single day, one row on your blanket. You don't have to, you can lump it all together. Just keep track of your temperatures and then we can just work on it together every couple weeks. Now, if you know what a temperature blanket is and you're ready to start, go ahead, click the show more and there's a timestamp to where we're getting started. If you are not really sure what a temperature blanket is, I'll be telling you all about it. And if you wanna follow along with a written pattern, it's available on my website, secretyarnery.com, including all the information I'm gonna be sharing with you now and all of the cutouts and printables that you can use to make your own customized a temperature chart for your yarn in both Celsius, Fahrenheit, my templates or blank templates plus using a whole bunch of colors or a reduced amount of colors just depending on how much yarn uh, colors you have to choose from. So that is all in the written pattern. There's a link to that down below as well. And now about temperature blankets, you can either choose to do the current year, 2023, or whatever year you're watching this video, or you can pick a year in the past, your first year of marriage or your daughter's first year of marriage, your son-in-law, your son, anybody, grandchildren, the year your grandkids were born. There's so many different possibilities. So the gist of it is you can either pick the average temperature, low temperature, or high temperature of either where you are physically in the world that day or for your home location, your address, or whatever address uh, you are making the temperature blanket for. So there's a lot of choices you get to make. You can also choose how long you're going to make it for, three months, six months, 12 months, and you can also choose the width. So for me, I'm going to be making, because it is only half the stitches, I'm going to be making a twin size bed cover a bedspread, so it's going to have about this much drape on each side of my bed. So this is on the side of the mattress and then it'll be along the top and along the other side of the mattress. And I'm going to be making tassels for mine. You can choose tassels or sewing in your ends. If you sew in your ends, the end does get a little bit uh, stiffer. It's a little bit less floppy just because there's more yarn tucked back in. So you can make it whatever size you want yours to be any multiple of two plus one and all of the measurements and the starting chains for whatever size you want to make are included in the written pattern. I figured all that out for you. And then you assign one color of yarn per temperature range. Traditionally, it is like this. So it goes from hot colors, so the reds, all the way down to the blues for the cold temperatures. But you could also, if you're not into the rainbow, obviously, love a good rainbow. If you are not into a rainbow, you can grab your favorite pillow, a rug, tapestry, your sofa, your living room decor, and get yarn colors that match that, and then just assign those to your different temperatures. And you can also mark your special days, birthdays, anniversaries, special days, special weather, anything like that. You can mark it with a row of popcorn stitches, or you could use a variegated yarn for that, striped yarn. You could do anything like that to customize 
as your blanket. Now to keep track of your temperatures, there's websites to use, weather.com or apps on your phone to find out the your temperature, but that will depend how close you live to where that temperature is recorded. And also the situation of your house, of your location, if you're in the full sun, if your house is shaded, all those things kind of affect it. So what I like to do, I keep a thermometer outside in the shade and I also use an app on my phone and then I check the high temperature for the day on my phone and I check my temperature outside at about three o'clock in the afternoon and I just check if my temperature matches that of the app and I do that every day for the first couple weeks just to see if I need to generally always minus two degrees or always add two degrees. And then I just kind of keep track of that. And if I forget to check the temperature, I can just use that same app, go back in time and see the high temperature of that day and then adjust it for, so that it will be exactly what was at my house, either adding or minusing some degrees, just depending on your physical actual location. And then also decide if you are making that temperature blanket for a specific address, like a physical location, or for yourself, what is your high temperature of the day or your low temperature if you're gonna do a colder blanket. That would be if you're going to a friend's house and it's super hot or if you're traveling or if you're at work, if there's a different temperature to your work location or visiting somebody, the temperature there, cold or warmer, that's another way you can do it. It would be your personal temperatures for that year. Now making anything for six months or 12 months can be overwhelming, but what to do in your head is just get over the idea of you have to work on it every day, you don't. But what you should do or try to get in the habit of doing is writing down the high temperature every day. And then you can kind of go and crochet your blanket in a batch, pop in a good movie, watch a good vlog. I have a couple. And then get caught up on your temperature blanket all at once. It goes a lot quicker because you get in the groove and you row after row, your blanket's done in no time. Now, if you're looking for historical temperatures, I have all of the websites and everything linked in the written pattern, but I'll also link my favorite website to get historical uh, temperatures temperatures in the comments down below. I don't want to mispronounce it, but I think it's like Wonder Weather or something like that. You wouldn't think it's a great weather site. It's a totally great weather site. <laughs> Now to make the ultimate temperature blanket, you will need size three DK weight yarn. It's a little bit thinner than a worsted weight yarn and I'm using a five millimeter hook for mine. I suggest starting with one ball of each color until you know what colors you're using a lot more than your other colors and also picking a yarn you have easy access to because you will need more of certain colors and some balls of yarn you will barely touch. If you want to get an idea of what your temperature blanket will look like using your colors, you can kind of plan that out on temperature-blanket.com. You can kind of put in your colors and how many colors you're going to use and you can pick your historical information from last year and then you can see what your blanket will look like if you made last year's temperatures. And if you want to follow along with the written pattern, it is available on my website. 10 pages of gorgeousness in here. Everything I'm sharing with you, plus a chart to keep track of your daily temperature and all of the templates for making your own personalized temperature gauge for your yarn. So that's also in the pattern. You can use as many yarn colors as you like. I'm using 18 for mine. Just go and find your DK weight yarn and look for colors that you like, that go together, that make you happy and see how many there are. Then look for your highest temperature and your lowest temperature of the year. That will be your average range and divide that range by the number of yarn colors you have. So you could do increments of five, 10, 15 degrees, and you can totally customize the templates in the pattern for your exact location and how many yarns you want to use. The finished size of the bedspread I am making is 60 inches by 75 inches. That is 152 centimeters by 191 centimeters. Here are the time stamps so you can jump back in where you left off and let's get started. So this is what you need to make your ultimate temperature blanket. Your DK weight yarns. I'm using a mix of Favorite and Softly Baby from Ice Yarns just because those colors go so great together. But ideally you would be able to pick your colors from one type of yarn. You will need to make your yarn swatch. So these are just the different temperatures with the assigned 
yarn beside it. So depending what your high or low temperature is of the day, you'd use that color to make the one row on your blanket. A thermometer for outside really helps just to make sure that the temperatures on your app or your website or wherever you're getting your temperatures from is accurate. The written pattern really helps because it has all of those charts at the back. You can customize your own yarn chart just from the back of the pattern. It's in Celsius, there's also Fahrenheit, and there's also my exact temperatures here in Nairobi. Plus it has all the sizes for whatever size blanket you want to make. That is all included in the written pattern. I'm using a five millimeter crochet hook. You'll also need a pair of scissors. If you're sewing in your ends, you're going to need a needle. A smaller hook really helps for bringing your yarn through. And if you're making tassels, a hardcover book and a flat bottomed pair of scissors really help. You can just slide those scissors along the crack of that book and cut your tassels super, super easy. So let's get started. My temperature today says it's 25, but at my house, I suspect it's gonna be about 27. 27 on my yarn chart is this gorgeous cantaloupe color right there. So I'm gonna start with the same yarn as my high temperature of the day. So I'll be making the twin size bedspread. So I'm gonna start by chaining 301. You can make yours any size at all, any multiple of two plus one. So to chain 301, you can do sets of 10 or 20. So I'm just gonna chain 20 to start. One, two, three, and 20. Flip it over, I wanna look for those back loops. So right underneath the working yarn, these little camel bumps, one, two, three. I just wanna find that first one right by the working yarn, right there, and I'm gonna pop in a stitch marker, just to mark 20. And now keep going, Chaining 20, adding a stitch marker, chaining 20, adding a stitch marker, until you have chained 301. So after you have chained your 301, mine is shorter, I'm just doing a little sample for the tutorial. Look along the back of your work, we wanna look for those camel bumps again. So the first one is right underneath the working yarn, is one, two, we're looking for the third camel bump right there. We wanna go in to the third back loop from our hook, just slide it on with your finger, and we're gonna do one single crochet. One single crochet into the third chain from the hook. And chain one. Now we're gonna skip one, so we're skipping the next camel bump or the next back loop, and we're gonna go in to the second right there. So into the second stitch, one single crochet. Chain one and skip one into the second, that second back loop right there. We're gonna go in and make one single crochet. So just slide it on and one single crochet, chain one, skip one into the second back loop right there, one single crochet. Chain one, skip one into the second, one single crochet. Just slide that second back loop onto your hook, one single crochet, chain one. So now you can pause the video and keep working along, doing a single crochet into the second back loop, one single crochet, and a chain one, skip one, all the way along until you reach the end of your chain. Have you subscribed to this channel? Go ahead and hit this button under this video right now so you don't miss out on any more fun stuff just like this. At the end of your chain, you'll have two stitches left. We wanna work right into that very last back loop right by our slip knot. If you've miscounted and you only have one chain left, you can just go ahead and unpick that slip knot and unpick that very last chain. So don't worry, you can unpick that very last chain and get it to be the right length. Just make sure you knot it and you sew in that tail. So at the end of your row, two stitches left, two chains. We'll do our chain one, skip one, and we're gonna work into this very last chain right there. Just into the back loop, slide that last chain onto your hook, 
and leave that stitch on your hook. So we're not going to finish our single crochet. Now if you're making tassels, you want to leave a long tail, longer than you think, so that we can incorporate that with our tassels and trim it later. If you're sewing in your tails, you can cut it a lot shorter, just long enough to sew in. So leave it with those two loops on your hook. We just started our single crochet, but we haven't finished it. And now go ahead to your app and look for tomorrow's temperature. Mine says 24, but I have to add two. So that's gonna be 26. And 26 is this next shade here, this lighter color. But I don't think you're gonna be able to see this color very much. So I'm gonna use this blue color just so you can see it easier for the tutorial. So with that single crochet still on my hook, loop of new yarn on your hook and you want to leave a long enough tail if you are making tassels or a regular tail if you are sewing in your ends and bring that loop through both of those stitches so we're just going to finish that single crochet with our new color yarn drop your tail so just hold both of those tails along the edge of your work shrink that loop down on your hook and chain two one and two turn your work and now we're going to be working just into these little spaces, the chain one spaces all the way along our work. So into that very first space, one single crochet, chain one, into that next space, just slide your hook into the space, one single crochet, chain one, into the next space, one single crochet, chain one, and into the next space. One single crochet and chain one. So you can pause the video and keep working along. One single crochet and a chain one into each of the spaces. So we're not working into the stitches, just into that space all the way along our row. One single crochet and a chain one into each of these spaces. If you can't see your spaces, you can give your work a little pull just pull your stitches and you'll see that space right in there and the next one right here. So just pull your work and you'll see those spaces just show up right there. So pause the video, keep working along. One single crochet and a chain one into each of the spaces all the way along and I'll meet you when we get to the end of our row. At the end of our row, there's our last space right there. So pop your hook in, one single crochet and a chain one. And we wanna work into our chain space. For this tutorial, for this pattern, that's exactly how we're gonna keep a nice straight edge. We're always gonna finish into this chain, into this chain space. So just slide your hook into that chain space and start your last single crochet, but leave those two loops on your hook. Cut your yarn long enough for a tassel and grab your next color of yarn. So whatever temperature you have recorded for the next day. Now I'm gonna show you the repeat for changing colors of yarn. So a new color of yarn on your hook, bring it through those stitches, so that single crochet, we finish it with our new color yarn. Drop your tail, just holding both of those along the back of your work, and chain two. One and two. Turn your work into this very first space right there. We're gonna make one single crochet and a chain one. And into the next space right here, one single crochet and a chain one. Next space, right there, one single crochet and a chain one. So you can pause the video and keep working along into each of these spaces, one single crochet and a chain one, all the way along your row until we reach the end. So at the end of our row, I've done my single crochet and chain one. Now we wanna work into this last space after that last single crochet below, right here into that space want to make our last single crochet. So if you're changing yarn color, you're going to leave those two loops on your hook. You're going to cut your yarn, grab your new yarn, loop on your hook, and finish this stitch with your new color yarn. If 
you're going to keep going, so if the next day's temperature is the same as today's, we'll just finish that single crochet with the same yarn. And instead of doing our chain two, we're just going to do a chain one. That's going to keep our edge nice and straight. And turn your work. And same as always into the very first space, one single crochet and a chain one. And into each space across, one single crochet and a chain one all the way across. So that is how we are going to do it if we're not changing our yarn color. So now pause the video and keep working along row by row, day by day, and I will meet you back when you are ready to do tassels. Now look for your pairs of yarn where your color changes are. And we're just going to give those a little knot. We want to just make sure no matter what happens to our blanket, these little tassels or our ends are never coming out no matter what. So knot all of your pairs all the way along both sides of your temperature blanket. If you are not doing tassels and you don't want a knot on the edge of your blanket, you can just loop it once nice and kind of snug, and then sew in your tails in the corresponding color. To make tassels, just wrap your yarn around a hardcover book. I like hardcover books because of this trough along here, along the top of that book edge. That is a great spot to just run your scissors down that edge. It's like an automatic guide, and then all of your tassels are cut to the same length. Starting on the edge of our blanket, just look for that first pair and pop your hook down into your blanket. You want to have some stitches or some strands of yarn on your hook. And grab some yarn. I'm going to be using two strands of purple and one of blue. You can make your tassels thinner or thicker, however you prefer. So just bring that through a bit of a larger loop. Grab those tails, just holding it along with your other yarn, and bring them all through that loop and snug them down. And there is your first tassel. So now look for your next two pair of tails and just pop your hook down in between them. So using three strands, similar colors to what is to the tails you're going to be sewing in. You can kind of match your colors a little bit. So all those loops on your hook and bring them through your blanket. A little bit of a larger loop and now grab those other tails just to hold along with your yarn. And slip stitch through that loop to join them and snug those down. Now look for your next pair, or your next two pairs of tails. Pop your hook down in between them and get your next set of tassels ready. Matching some of the colors in your next tails. Just put those loops on your hook. Bring them through your blanket. A bit of a larger loop. Grab the tails from our blanket and just hold them with your tassel yarn. And slip stitch, so bring all of those tails through that loop, just like that, and snug that down. So there is another tassel. If you get to a spot in your temperature blanket where there's a larger gap, instead of putting these two together, I'm just going to do for this one. I'm going to just keep my tassels evenly spaced. So my tassel normally would be about right here. So that's where I'm going to do my tassel, but I'm only going to take this pair of tails with it. I'm going to keep these other two for the next tassel on this side. So for here, I'm going to add one more strand of yarn just to thicken it up, just like that. So for this tassel, if I'm only using two strands from my blanket, I'm going to add another strand on my tassel. We want the same amount of yarn strands per tassel, so just keep that in mind when you're working along. So bring that up and through. Hold the one tail or the one pair of tails along with your yarn and just bring those through. 
and you can do that as often as you need to. If you have a large spot in your blanket where you don't change color, it's all the same color, just make a tassel in the middle wherever you need to, and instead of using three strands, just use five strands, and that will look like a regular tassel, just matching whatever color you need to where you haven't changed color, so there's no tails for you to use. Just use five strands of yarn and put that tassel anywhere you need to. So now pause the video, keep working along till all your tassels are done. When your tassels are done, just comb them as best you can, just so they're laying generally flat. Grab some masking tape, and just keeping parallel with the top of your work, like where your knots are, just kind of eyeball it down until we see a few strands that are shorter than our tape. Somewhere about right there, and just tape that down. So you have some shorter ones up here. So that's kind of how I'm eyeballing it. Take your measuring tape and just measure. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to make sure you haven't gone on a crazy angle. Grab another piece of masking tape and then just lay it straight across your work, leaving a little gap. So now we're just going to slide our scissors underneath right where this line is. And just cut your tassels. There's all your ends. And remove your masking tape from your tassels. And there they are. Nice and trimmed. So go ahead and do this on the other side of your blanket and your temperature blanket is finished. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I did. I'm waiting for you in that video right there. And stay hooked.